Hello, welcome to everyone. In this video, this is the part two of solution of nanometer and an application on the question 2020-21. Today, I want to discuss question number two to six. You can see this question paper. This question number one already discussed in the last video. Today, I want to discuss group B. That is question number two, three, four, five, and six. In the upcoming session, we will be covered question number seven, eight, nine, ten. I know and 12 okay so let's start to this discussion first question say how can xrd measure be employed to evaluate the average crystal size of the small grain then what the factor contribute the bordering of the xrd peak the uh, xrd uh, grain size suppose you have a crystal suppose you have a uh, crystal with uh, some grains like that in this grain, the planes along that direction. In this plane, suppose uh, planes are that direction. In this plane, suppose these planes are that direction and this direction. So this uh, grain size can be. This is the grain size. You can see this is uh, again. This is another grain. This is uh, four grains. So the grain size can be obtained from the uh, from the peak in the XRD uh, XRD experiment from this. A uh, device scalar, scalar formula that is d equal to k lambda by beta cos theta, where k is a constant, device shape constant that is nearly 0.9. Lambda is the wavelength of the XRD which are used in the experiment. Beta is the full width of the half maxima. That is, if you take the, any uh, peak and this corresponding peak actually represent these planes. Uh, this one, uh, this is one, for one plane, this is one plane. If the grain size is larger, then this is height is maximum like that, and this will be short. So the uh, if if you take any one single peak from this experiment, and this maximum value is I naught, and at uh, at the uh, middle or the half of this maximum value uh, is I zero by two. At this position, the separation of theta is known as beta. So full width that is the full width at the half maxima this half maxima is known as fwhm or beta and theta is the angle of this peak diffraction angle so using this formula of the peak uh, from the uh, and from the peak uh, of this experiment you can easily find out the grain size of this material next is the bordering actually bordering of the peaks is due to two factor that is strain of the crystal uh, imperfection and the grain size due to uh, strain this is C epsilon tan theta and this is for grain so this bordering of the peak is due to two effect uh, first one is for grain and second one is for uh, strain okay next is why are direct band gap material preferred over indirect band gap material for optoelectronic devices Direct band gap material means the lower value of conduction band and the higher value of balance band will be the same k value. This is called direct band gap. If these are not in the same k value, then this is called indirect band gap. In case of direct band gap, when the electron jump from conduction band to balance band, only photon, only photon are ejected and the energy is the separation of this. This is the age new. But in case of the indirect band gap material, when the electron jump from conduction band to valence band, it cannot directly jump from the conduction band to valence band with, as the k value are different. At first, this uh, change into the k value emitting by phonon, emitting by phonon. During this transition, it emits phonon. After that, it emits photon. So, in case of indirect band gap, there is two radiation occur phonon. That is the uh, vibrational uh, uh, unit or the quant of vibration and photon that is the quant of light. So in case of direct band gap material there is only photon but in case of indirect band gap material there is phonon as well as is photon. So this is the basic difference from uh, of the direct band gap and indirect band gap material. Silicon is the indirect band gap material, germanium etc. The indirect band, band, band gap material. So here the things is uh, optoelectronic device that is the light and transition that is this there is a transition of electron from band to band. So in case of indirect band gap material you can see there is another things is the phonon. So there is another vibrational energy are there. 
so which 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 is as effect affect the optoelectronic properties that's why direct van gamma material is preferable in compared to indirect van gamma material in case of optoelectronic device next question is what are the basic difference between any ms and mem ms give their application any ms full form is nano electromechanical system and this is the micro electron mechanical system these two system are different in their uh, size but actually they convert electrical energy to mechanical energy and vice versa that's mean it's convert electrical energy to mechanical energy or it also can be convert the mechanical energy into the electrical energy that is suppose nano uh, motor nano motor you know the name that nano motor which are uh, recently used in the biological uh, instrument or biological surgery this nano material can go through these <coughs> line in the blood line and, and it can uh, eliminate the cholesterol like that so this uh, nanomotor also use and this actually NEMS MEMS the size is defined this is for micro size and this is for nano size the critical size is below 100 nanometer this critical size 20 micrometer through 1 millimeter uh, here the mass is smaller compared to this one and the surface to volume ratio surface to volume ratio is higher which is effective uh, when the surface uh, phenomena is active you, when the surface contact is uh, necessary then this phenomena that is the surface to volume ratio higher is more preferred so this is a more preferred than one and more efficient for high frequency resonator also and in case of uh, application you can see there are a list of application for NEMS and MEMS so for, for MEMS this is inject printer astrometer in modern car etc etc here you can see this ultra sensitive sensor atomic force microscope tip nems uses afm tip like that so you can write down these things and note, note it down next question says that is compared to approaches that is top down and bottom up approach of the synthesis of nanoparticle the nanoparticle you know can be synthesized by two basic process that is top down and bottom up top down means you have a bulk material and if you etch, etching this material and reduce the size into nanoparticle in the opposite direction uh, you have a atoms and you accumulate them and produce the nano material nanoparticle so this top down and this bottom up so a bulk material is taken and matched into the modify into the desired shape is called the top down and uh, building something from the basic material is called bottom up for example lithography etching ball meaning this is at the top down and the physical chemical vapor deposition solid gel technique epitaxial goes at the bottom up process here the difference is that and that is the in case of uh, top down approach manufacturing started from large structure and become smaller here the starting building block are the smaller than the final product here the product structure with perfect uh, shape and edge but here this not here high precision accuracy there is low precision and contain um, um, uh, certain amount of waste here but here the waste is lower next question says write down note on the operation and application of atomic force microscope you need to uh, write down the note and <coughs> the operation and application of the afm okay so AFM is the laser light reflected back from top of the tip of cantilever to the detector. Here three modes of operation as the contact mode, non-contact mode and trapping mode. Okay. Contact mode means uh, tip sample is, uh, is contact here. Okay. So repulsion force, first scanning, soft sample can damage because it's contact. Non-contact, they are separated by this, so lifetime of pin is uh, high because it's not contact with this, so it's a high lifetime. But in case of trapping mode, this trapped here and there is. So these are actually used in the different region of the separation uh, of the tip and sample. Uh, here the force region is like that. So non-contact is less force. For contact, this force is high and trapping region there is like that. So application of AFM, you can see that is uh, used for 3D morphology and you can easily find out the depth, uh, profile, uh, height profile of the sample. Resolution is better than one Armstrong under the high vacuum condition and use drag atom by one by one, deposit them in a particular point of sample. So these are the application of AFM.
so that's it for today this is all about me this is my contact detail this is my youtube channel so take care we meet in the next video as soon as possible thank you